Hi everybody, welcome back to Flames Pyro Art for Beginners. I've transferred some eyes over to our practice piece. You won't be able to see the outlines very well, but I've done a few different kinds of eyes that we can have a look at together. Now there's certain things that we need to always remember when we're doing eyes is there will always be on every eye a highlight and the highlights are there to not be touched or be left in the lighter um, shade I'm using birch ply at the minute. This is my favorite wood to burn on. I'm using my medium spear shader, which I'm just gonna clean up a little of a, a leather belt. It's made of just pure leather, so we'll just clean the excess polish off. And this is just burning off that last bit of polish from when I had to clean up from when I dropped my pen. So when we're doing actual people's eyes, what I like to try and do is start from the outside getting this is the person's eye getting some sort of boundary set for the actual iris And as we know with with eyes as always you know a clump of lashes you know are all coming up here that will disguise things and hide things with ladies long lashes as you can tell that's a female's eye And I've got my heat setting at three, which is quite high for the way I usually like to burn. I may just knock it down a little touch, but I don't want this lesson to drag on too long for you because I know people get bored if the lesson takes like an hour. So we'll have a go anyway and see what we can come up with on this sort of speed burn. Let's keep it at setting three. And let's try and speed burn an eye out. So don't forget we're going to have lashes all coming off. Now what you'll also find with eyes, you think your own eye, you will have this dark line that goes there and then it also tails off. So that is something we do need to take into account. All we'll do for the time being is just 
got a light burn stroke over it. And we'll follow some more of these lashes. And then they finish off right in the corner. But this part we've set here on the bottom rim of the eye this is just the sort of inside part right next to the actual pupil If you to zoom in on an eye and see it has a few different sort of steps in it. And they, you know, it, they do don't they, they, they give you the what you call it like have a sack down or there's all different shapes. I can't think of the word but And then the bottom eyelashes are always shorter. Okay, so once we've just about got our perimeter set. Over here, we'll have a tear duct. <laughs> and this part I'm putting in now is all skin. Maybe ladies eyeliner. And I'm using the tip of the pen here because sometimes you will get like a little love art shape in the tear duct. set for now okay then on to actually wood burning an eye what I like to do like I said is work from the outside in so everything sort of meets to the middle So as long as you keep pushing them strokes towards that pupil here in the middle. Everything will be fine. You have to keep turning your board.
find them stroke same lips the thing i like about the medium spatiator is it's got so many uses you can use the tip you can use you know like the flat iron you can use the side of it you can use three quarters of the pen it's just a really versatile pen that you can pretty much do everything with you can shade with it i'm very blessed to have this version and an extra small version of the space shader which comes in really handy as well Now obviously it doesn't matter whether we've got blue eyes, brown eyes, well brown eyes is better, but if you've got blue eyes, green eyes or whatever, we're not going to be able to show them through a work hour because we work in sepia in browns and different shades of brown and maybe touching black from time to time to get to black is very difficult because the one thing we don't want to do when we're trying to get to black is we do not want to char the wood you don't want to singe it that just leaves an ugly mess you know if i was to crank this heat up now to say six or seven and just think that I'd just burn really hot and get this pupil black i would just singe the wood and trust me it would just look a mess this example we have a highlight that touches through the pupil so that area is a no-go zone and there's a few tiny little marks in it from whatever it's reflecting off but the reflection is just in the pupil pretty much darken all this up the shade that you will find when you're doing realistic looking eyes all your tones and all the shading is all going to change as you progress through the eye everything will have to be rebalanced and you'll find the bits of shade at the start You'll have to go back to them and look at them again. Remember that highlight, we can't go in there. We 
can even outline the edge of it because that's how it looks on our image when we work our way up to the edge of it and at this point I'm just using the tip of my spear shader, the very tip of it, just to mark in the pupil. You know, usually I'd, I'd say come at things from the inside. Sometimes you may have to come at them from the outside. Or if you feel confident enough to be able to wood burn it, it from the wrong side where the heat bleed could bleed out into a part that you don't want it to. Hopefully we are catching this camera, I will, I'll zoom it in when I do the video editing if this one makes the highlight real. So let's have a look, shading and that. This is the iris, isn't it? The coloured bit, I always have to remember. Now you'll find as well, it isn't on this particular eye. But you will find that usually there's a little, like sort of fluid from the because eyes aren't dry are they usually you find a little shimmer down there where the pupil where the iris sorry meets the lid you sometimes get a sack of like fluid that highlights for some reason on this this example she hasn't got that So we're still working the outside of the eye, trying to get it round, because eyes are round, aren't they? They're, they're perfectly round, and sometimes when we transfer, and no, certainly when I transfer, unless I'm doing it for a commission, then I spend a couple of hours transferring or a day even <laughs> you know you never quite get a perfectly round transfer line on your eye that's where your pyrography you can then start to make the eye round very lightly touching just to try and capture that circle and 
remember everything's pulling in towards that central point. And eyes usually go through different stages as we'll <clears throat> take a quick look here. It goes darker to a lighter spell and then to a slightly start darkening and then bang into the pupil which is obviously black so always on the outer rim on any eye you always get a darker patch on the outside of the eye Forget this lady's lashes are all going to be here. This is all just from memory now, just making this up as we go along. Now what you'll find with like the, the eyelashes on the top of the eye because if you were on a side view you would see them sticking out and curling but on a front view you just see them very short and basically like this they are actually not just little short tiny lines but from face on, they look, you can only see a little bit of them. As we get further down the side, we get to start seeing more of the length. Of the eyelashes. Go back to the pupil. And set yourself like a light perimeter still pulling in towards the centre of the eye. You have to excuse all the mess of working, hopefully. When I zoom in, you're not going to see all the mess. I am a scruff. I tidy up and I say, right, I'm going to keep my room tidy. And so yesterday I did this tidy up and already today, <laughs> as I've been searching for eyes that I could show you, printouts and my graphite paper and boards out and now it's a mess again. Luckily as you only ever see my hand 
that's okay. Now even at setting three, we still have to employ some of the burn low and slow method of pyrography. We can't just crank the heat up too high. I'm afraid you, there is layering that is required with all pyrography. If you see these pyrographers who have the tip glowing red hot, then yeah, you know, they personally may be very proficient and very skilled at working that way to learn that way would be extremely difficult the best way to learn is have your heat set lower and give yourself the opportunity to you know come up with something good So this highlight does extend right the way up to where the lashes finish. start with just keep working your border your outside of the eye pulling everything in remember to the center just going to do this from imagination sometimes it's good to do that is you know transfer the makings of let's say an eye out but then cast aside unless it's for a commission piece where you have to you know make the eye look like the person's eye just go with your own artistic flow you know create your own unique I mean, I've got so paint pots in the way and things that I just get myself set up better 
before a lesson. Because they're not lessons, are they? They're just guides. If you want to watch them and see a little bit of pyrography. Of how people do it who've been doing it for a couple of years. That light is really glaring. And that's what this channel's all about, is me passing on some of the knowledge through my journey so far. And if I can inspire other, let me move that other jar now, we're slowly getting to move things out of the way. And we can actually start moving a wad. One other cool I had seen it was with loads of makeup on. It was down there, it was a an eyeball that had actually been tattooed. Imagine having your eye your eyeball tattooed. No, I, I've got tattoos but I would never ever get my my eyeball tattooed. God, you must be brave to have that done. I don't even know how they do it. Would they knock you out? Would, would they put you under anaesthetic? Then surely a, a tattooist isn't, you know, legally authorised or whatever to put someone under sedation God knows that's where you do a google search for people tattooing the eye Then here, if you leave, instead of going, you know, carrying on with a round circle, leave a little flat spot for that fluid that I was talking about. Working from the outside in, and every stroke I'm doing is all going to the center.
feels like it's been weeks since I've done any wood burning even though I just finished that truck commission uh, for the lady feels like I haven't picked my pyro pens up and done a project for myself in so long want to burn a, a fox and so I'm going to find a fox on Pixabay or Unsplash because my shutter stock even though I downloaded these when I did have my Shutterstock subscription for some reason when you printed them off on your phone it'd still come up with the uh, watermark on them you'd have to print them off on a tablet or a PC to get rid of the watermark for some reason I did have a paid subscription, I think it was something like, what was it, 22 quid a month for 10 images. I mean, they were superbly high quality images, you know, you can't fault them for that, they were superb. But Unsplash and Pixabay, royalty free. A lot of people I know use Pinterest as well, but Pinterest aren't really royalty free images unless it says on there royalty free. And it's just a place where a lot of artists put the work. slowly now making lighter so it's because we've layered up on this outside edge the strokes we put now leading into the middle will be lighter because we haven't layered them up the same as we have the border of the eye dog's eyes uh, absolutely love doing dog's eyes I can spend maybe two or three days just on the eyes alone maybe more you know to get to push them really deep and get that really glossy effect Now at this point, I'm using the edge of the spare shader. See how it's shaped perfectly for most jobs.
bought some new black matting to try and put down so when I was doing time lapses and it, the wood doesn't slide very easily on it are coming up so already now we're starting to see an eye remember the pupil is black can't just go straight to black so we have to layer our way to the darkest shade the dogs are coming in to say hello to me in the four two hours One of them, our Maisie, is very poorly at the minute. She's in the late stages of heart failure. So we're just enjoying what time we've got left with Maisie. We've got Maisie, Alfie, Ollie and Pep. The four cheeky two hours. Hopefully, as you can see now. You know, by setting that darker border on the outside, it does start lending some shape to the eye, doesn't it? It stops it being flat because there's a darker point and then it goes lighter and then darker over the edge, you know. In an oval at its center. Is this pupil? This is where the extra small spear shader will come into its own. I could get really tight into the tiniest of spaces with it. Instead of waiting for the pen to heat up, I have to move something else out of the way. We'll do our best with this medium. I'm using the very tip of the pen now. This is what you want to try and get yourself to is perfectly round pupil when you do transfer more than likely you won't have drawn a perfect circle 
think it's one of the most hardest things to do in it is draw a, a perfect circle. And down here again maybe it's just there's just gonna be darkness as those lashes come out from the eye and just like they are really coming out but like I said, just on the view we've got to just short lines. And you'll see here usually on an eye will also be like a little step where the bo bottom lashes are oh, to the pupil How long have we been going for? Wow, 48 minutes. Time flies. We'll stop this at an hour. People probably aren't going to watch him for me to this point. I'm probably talking to myself, you know. I don't think people have the concentration span to watch an hour long tutorial. great if you did because that would show you all the way to the end the first half an hour or so is just really laying down the basics But if I don't show you the laying down of the basics part and do it before I start filming, then you're not going to see how to construct an eye properly. And to do a really fabulous looking eye could take you a couple of hours, maybe, maybe more, depending on the level of detail that you really want to go into. I'm using the edge of the spare shader there.
just keep pulling the strokes in. And you will get this lighter area as you get towards the pupil. And the lighter areas of a wood burn makes it look like it's raised up compared to the darker spots so we are giving some sort of depth perception to it Remember, highlight is our no-go zone. Let's see if we can get right up to the edge. pupil will take a good bit of layering to get to a really dark shade We're stopping in six minutes and we'll come back and do part two. Of this iron, if you have watched to this stage, thank you very much for sharing your time with me. I appreciate everybody who watches the videos and I do hope that I've taught you something or given you some inspiration or showed you some tips just to help advance your pyrography skills even further it's good to practice this sort of thing if somebody came along and asked you to do a commission of a person and you'd practiced doing eyes then it wouldn't be a daunting task to you would it And as my wife says, the eyes are the window to the soul and they're the most important part of a portrait. The eyes are the first thing you look for, aren't they? And so those eyes have got to be striking.
you can visit my wife's uh, art group which she's linked to the channels on my YouTube and DD's art she does graphite and pencil colored pencil art Completely self taught as well. Neither of us did any arts at college or university or anything like that. We, we both were at the University of Life. Okay, so we're coming up on an hour. Now that's gone so fast. So we'll leave that eye there for today. And I hope. Like I said, it's taught you something or given you some inspiration with your own eyes and pyrography work. Take your time and just layer up from your darkest tones, pulling everything into the centre. Look for your highlight where that highlight is and with a flash or wherever the light's coming from you don't touch that area and you just build around it and you will have a fantastic looking eye so hopefully that's helped a little today and I will see you in part two of how to wood burn eyes. Okay, thanks very much for watching today. Take care, have a lovely Sunday. Happy pyroing and I will see you all again very soon. Okay, take care for now guys. Thank you. Bye.